Elon Musk's Neuralink has surgically implanted the first controversial brain chip implant in a live human being, and there are updates. Elon Musk's company Neuralink has been in the news again recently after they implanted the first brain implant chip into a human patient. And after initially performing well, it has hit a bump in the road. Now, before we look at what happened, let's take a minute to go over the history of Neuralink brain implant and its complications for restoring vision to the blind. You may recall that recently, Musk's Neuralink received FDA approval to surgically implant its controversial brain chip implant into live human beings. So what can it do? How can it help treat disease or improve our lives? And more importantly, what are the risks? In this video, I'm going to explain for you all the recent advancements in bionics, including Neuralink, as they relate to medicine, treating disease, and especially your vision. For those who are new to the channel, welcome. I'm Dr. Audrey Tai, board certified and fellowship trained cataract and refractive surgeon, ophthalmologist, and cornea specialist. And this is Eye Channel by Eye Surgeon. So, what can Neuralink do? Elon Musk has stated publicly in interviews that the first functionality that Neuralink is going for is to restore vision. In fact, he has stated that Neuralink may be able one day to bring vision even to people who have never had vision, those who were born blind, for example. The other function that Musk has stated Neuralink will be attempting to achieve initially is to restore the connection between brain and body. For example, for those with severed spinal cord or quadriplegia. So how would a neural link work? Well, first, let's take a look at how your eyes naturally interface with your brain to create the miracle of vision. There's light all around us. And when light enters your eye, it passes through the cornea, the clear windshield of the front of your eye, and travels through your retina, the thin layer of tissue on the back of your eye that enables you to see by detecting light signals. The retina then converts the light signal into an electrical signal and sends it along the optic nerve to the visual cortex in the back part of your brain, called the occipital lobe. If the signal pathway is interrupted, for example, by a cataract clouding your natural lens of your eye, or damage to the optic nerve, for example, from glaucoma, then your brain will not receive the full spectrum of electrical signals and you will not be able to see well, or perhaps not able to see at all. Each spot or area of your visual field within the capacities of your retina is connected to a specific spot or area in the visual cortex. Surgeons refer to this as retinotopic map. Because of this, neuroscientists can map out each point in your visual field with a specific location in the visual cortex of your brain. What this means is that theoretically, an implant like the ones being developed by Neuralink would be able to stimulate the specific neurons in the visual cortex that correspond to each visual world around the patient. If there is a car or face on the left, for example, the chip can stimulate the area of the visual cortex so that the patient sees a car or face shaped object precisely where it is located in the world, just as they would if that area of the brain was stimulated by light from the object hitting the retina. One interesting fact is that retina topic map is inverted. Visual objects in the top of the visual field stimulate neurons in the lower portion of the visual cortex and vice versa. If a patient had lost the function of their retina or optic nerve, the neural link chip could directly stimulate the neurons in the occipital cortex of the brain that would usually be stimulated by the optic nerve, restoring some vision. Imagine your eye as a natural camera connected to your brain by the optic nerve. In theory, Neuralink could directly connect a literal camera to your brain via the Neuralink chip, and that camera would become like your eyes. The camera would work as a retina, and the Neuralink chip would work like an optic nerve, sending signal to the visual cortex of the brain directly. The brain would interpret those signal as light, and the person would see the image sent. With this technology, it is possible that you would be able to see anything that a camera could detect. It could even give you vision outside of the normal vision spectrum, such as infrared and ultraviolet, even microwaves or x-rays. Like many scientific advances, this technology has been predicted for many years in science fiction including the famous character George LaFord, played by LeVar Burton on the show Star Trek The Next Generation. But this is no longer just science fiction. Neuralink has received FDA approval to begin clinical trials on humans, and starting 2024, they will be using surgical robots to implant microchips into the brain 
of living people. So what is the device that Neuralink is implanting to people's brains? Well, basically, it is a tiny computer chip attached to an array of more than a thousand super thin, flexible conducting electrodes that the Neuralink surgical robot carefully thrusts deep into the cerebral cortex. So does that mean the patients will have to plug their head into the Tesla charger? Fortunately, no. Tiny chips are powered by an even tinier battery, which is charged wirelessly by an inductive charger. The patient only needs to place their head near the charger, which could be in a pillow, for example. In some of Neuralink's monkey experiments, they place the charger in a branch that the monkey would place his head near, and he was likely not even aware that he was charging. So, a thousand super thin flexible conducting electrodes installed deep into cerebral cortex. Even for an eye surgeon, that sounds like very precise work. So how does Neuralink propose to get the chips installed safely? The answer is using a surgical robot. The current Neuralink surgical robot is called the R1. The Neuralink team showed a live demonstration of the R1 surgical robot in action at the show and tell event. As you can see, the R1 has the ability to grasp and precisely insert these flexible electrode tips into the brain without damaging any important blood vessels. Eye surgeons already use automated surgical robots to assist us with ophthalmology logic surgery. Use automated surgical robots to assist when I perform LASIK and laser cystic cataract surgery. The surgical robots can track patient eye movement in real time and allow an experienced eye surgeon to create incisions and deliver laser treatments that are incredibly precise within thousands of a millimeter in some cases. These tiny margins of error can make a big difference in a patient's final vision outcome in eye surgery. And when we're talking about neurosurgery, such as that being performed by the Neuralink R1, that requires incredible precision as well. The Neuralink implant is the newest and most ambitious attempt yet at artificial sight, but it is not the first. Way back in 2013, the FDA approved a retinal implant manufactured by a company called Second Sight. Their implant was called the Argus and later the Argus II, which was a retinal prosthesis. Named after the Greek mythological character Argus Pennotes, who had 100 eyes. The Argus II was implanted by eye surgeons onto the retina of a patient who would then wear special camera embedded in a pair of sunglasses, which would send visual data to a processing computer on a belt chip and then to the retinal prosthesis, which would then stimulate the optic nerve with pattern pins of electricity, allowing the patient to see what the camera captured in a very low resolution black and white video, 60 pixels total. Now, 60 pixels is not very detailed sight. That's less than an eight by eight grid of dots. But when the technology came out over 10 years ago, returning even that much functional sight to someone who was previously completely blind was nothing short of a revolution. Unfortunately, things didn't go very well for second sight or their patients. As the business side of the enterprise nearly folded, and according to several media stories, Second Sight chose to leave all Argus patients with unsupported obsolete hardware in their eyes. Second Sight's Argus program is now widely considered a cautionary tale. Surprisingly, Second Sight is actually still in implant business. In July 2019, Second Sight sent Argus patients a letter saying it would be phasing out the retinal implant technology to clear the way for the development of its next generation brain implant for blindness, Orion, which had begun an NIH-funded clinical trial with six patients that previous year. And in 2022, they announced a merger with a small company called MPM to produce a drug delivery implant. Understandably, some would-be patients are hesitant to consider second sight implants after what happened with Argus II. Company co-founder Robert Greenberg has said that second sight's long-term plan was always to pivot to a brain implant that would bypass the eye altogether and directly stimulate the visual cortex. Which brings us to Neuralink. Hopefully, Elon and the folks at Neuralink have learned from the lessons of the Argus II, namely that when we're taking computer chips installed into brain or retina, we really need to think long and hard about how these patients will be supported throughout their lifespan. And it's pretty astonishing that that didn't happen with the Argus. Elon Musk recently hosted a show and tell event for Neuralink, which showcased some of their latest advances. 
The neural link implant is implanted directly into the brain, unlike Argus implant, which was a retinal implant. This means that the surgery would be performed by a neurosurgeon rather than an eye surgeon. The first step is to remove a small portion of the skull and the tough outer layer of tissue underneath the skull that protects the brain called the dura. The surgeon then inserted multiple thin flexible electrodes into the brain itself, which are the wires that carry information to the brain. Since those electrodes are implanted in precisely mapped out locations in the visual cortex or vision sensing part of your brain. When the electrodes are activated in a specific pattern, this allows you to essentially see that pattern. So your brain can see a real time digital image of the world around you, regardless whether you have functional eyes or not. They then basically connect those electrodes to a computer processing unit which is connected to a digital camera, which could be placed in eyeglasses, for example, or theoretically, even in a prosthetic eye. One important innovation that Neuralink highlighted at their recent show and tell was that they're thinking what I had regarding the future upgradability of their technology. Hopefully, this shows they have learned the lesson of Argus and will be able to make sure that patients that receive their implant can access support and upgrades throughout their lifespan. So I promised you I would comment on the recent news about Neuralink after implanting the first of the brain chips into a live human patient. The initial results were promising, but unfortunately, over time, some of the implanted electrodes have retracted and become non-functional. Details are few so far, but a blog post by Neuralink on May 8th reported that there is not any harm expected to the patient, and that although the implant was less functional and did require some reprogramming to account for the missing electrodes, they were able to regain full functionality. Brain implants are an entirely new field at the nexus of medicine and engineering, and the technology is likely to progress rapidly now that corporations like Neuralink and Synchrom are involved. Such technologies have the potential to change our society and the way we live our lives, and considerable efforts and resources must be allocated to make sure that these powerful technologies are only used in ways that are ethical and in accordance with our most noble characteristics. That's it for now. As always, if I've learned something new, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to my channel to support more informative content on eye health and surgery. You can also follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Dr. Audrey Tai to learn more about my practice. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.